Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Claire Morno. I'm the communications manager at CISA, and I'm here today with Jill Horton Lyons of Winterberry Farm in Coleraine. And we're going to learn a little bit about what they're up to up there. Um, Jill, do you want to start by just introducing yourself and telling us about your farm and, and what you do? Sure. Um, we are in Coleraine. We've, my husband Jim and I have been farming for about 35 years now. Um, and we are primarily we are primarily a fiber farm, but we're also a teaching farm. One of our big joys is having people come to the farm and learn something. So we teach fiber classes and farming classes. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit just what you mean by fiber? What sort of animals does that mean you have? What does it mean that you're you're doing? Our, our main our main animal our main animals are sheep. And that's what we've been doing for the longest time. We raise primarily, uh, well, essentially we have three types of sheep for wool. Um, Romneys and a, a mixed fine wool for, a thing, for people who wanna make things to wear next to their skin. Mm -hmm. And then we have some great Scottish blackface um, and they only produce wool for rugs. Gotcha. And so what does that mean that you're doing with the wool? So you have sheep, you shear them, and, and then what do you produce? What we, what we mostly do is we sell wool in any form you can think of to other people who make things. We make a few things ourselves, but we're primarily, I'm primarily a dyer mm -hmm. um, and also a farmer because these sheep and we also have some Angora goats and we have some Angora rabbits and the farming stuff takes a lot of time. So, so I, and I have, I was about to say, it's not too early for show and tell, <laughs> but this is, um, this is one batch. And what I'm most known for as a dyer is these multiple colors. I'm not sure whether you can see um, what comes through on the screen, but, but that's my, um, distinctive competence, I guess. Here, that was a Romney, so it glistens. The fine wools are much softer, but they don't glisten, so. So somebody could buy that and uh, spin it? Yes. Into yarn and uh, Somebody could buy that. We also, um, well, here. This is wool just sheared off of a sheep. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you can't really see the greasy locks. I think you can see a little bit of the dirt. Yes. <laughs> so that's the original. And then when you wash it, it becomes lovely like this. I should hold them both so you can see how much cleaner it gets. It's like a cloud. Yes, like a, like a cloud. And then um, all kinds of things can happen. You can spin it into yarn just in this stage or lots of times we send yarn to the mill mm -hmm. and they comb it and they make this stuff called roving which is which is mostly used by spinners because they'll split it and use a little bit and right before your eyes I'm making you a little bit of not very good yarn <laughs> that's what yarn is is putting twist into um, fiber yeah that's so neat. And also yeah. for felting, you could use that for people do little needle felting projects and all people sorts of- People do a lot of needle felting projects. When we started this, the everybody that I sold wool to was a knitter or spinner or weaver, that kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted every dye lot. They said, I need at least a pound and a half. Um, and now that we sell to um, most, a lot to needle felters, they think that, this is a lot. <laughs> so we let people have bags and they come and they take things out of 20 bags or so and they go home happy. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm wondering, I feel like most of the, the farms that we work with around here are food producers. So we talk a lot about the food system, the local food and farm right. system. Um, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you see your business and fiber production sort of fitting into that local landscape of agriculture. Um, well, first of all, like all, like no matter what a farmer raises, 
farming is essentially taking care of land. Um, and so it's very important for us, for our sheep, we rotationally graze and we move them along. And what we're fundamentally raising is grass. Mm -hmm. um, and the better the grass, the better the sheep. So it's very, in that way, it's very similar. We have a lot of the same cares, um, uh, cares for land and cares that people um, can learn about what they eat. So we also sell, we sell lamb um, as well to eat and, um, and we eat it ourselves. It's not as big a part of our, of what we do. Um, and all the other, all the other meat we eat, we buy from local farmers who yeah. live right around here. Yeah. Um, right. And I think you were saying earlier that most of the fiber producers that, you know, also do produce some food people have, it's part of a sort of mixed array of, of production that people put. Right. And especially, well, for example, I have an Angora rabbit here. Um, and Angora rabbit manure is highly desired by usually gardeners. Farmers don't need more manure than this, but they have one of the few manures that you can apply. Let's see. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm, what end I'm looking at. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the head. She's, this is the Lila and she's due for um, being plucked when they get four coats a year. And so the, the old coat just pulls out. Yeah, that's um, what's happening with my dog. Like that, but rabbit manure is an incredible fertilizer. And lots of times our friends will come up and do chores with us and take home bags of manure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little uh, party favor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how you see sort of the flip side of my previous question, how you see your fiber production, a little bit of context for um, sort of the global fiber production world and how you see your, your small local business fitting into that. And um, yeah. How, how see, you um, the fiber world was a lot slower to look at local. And actually there's a local fiber movement that started first in California. Mm -hmm. um, there is a group right here in Massachusetts and they call it the Massachusetts Fiber Shed. They, um, they are encouraging use of local, um, local wools. They had, they bought um, fleece from several of us and had it spun in a nearby mill in Vermont and um, then woven by a Massachusetts weaver who then, and then all these people made these wonderful cloth, cloth uh, wonderful cloth clothes. Yeah. Um, really almost New York designer kinds of things. So that was, and they had a great show. Mm -hmm. So it's, what I'm saying is that it's happening. Mostly it's, um, it's not there yet, but people are beginning to pay attention to some of the consequences of using um, ar artificial fibers, um, some of the, the and what that's doing to land. Right. So there's, in, I think there's increasing interest in wool. Yeah, yeah. And one important part of what you all do, at least historically, this is a little bit of a COVID impact question maybe, um, but education has always been such a big part of, of what your farm has to offer, which certainly is that sort of hands-on in-person teaching um, is definitely something that is sort of, you know, locally focused. So I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that piece of your work um, and maybe how it's shifted during the pandemic. The pandemic was really hard. Um, for Just from a sales point of view, um, most of the fairs shut down, which is one of the big places we fiber people sell things. Right. Um, for us, it was really hard because we didn't, we stopped having our farm open houses we stopped all of the weaving programs and the spinning programs. Um, so it, it's been a bleak two years. Um, we're very excited. We think that at least open farm um, outside, mostly outside activities can start. 
Um, so we will be open for our shearing day will be uh, open again in March. And then Easter afternoon, we always have an animal open house and that we'll be able to do. And we hope that people will be able to come up and stay with us for a day for lambing, um, which was one of our favorite, which is one of our favorite programs. Yeah. Then we'll see about fiber programs. So um, your annual cycle is a little different than it is for you know a, a vegetable producer. So right. shearing, that's their annual haircut that the sheep get right. in the spring. And then at Easter, that's an opportunity to see baby animals. Baby animals, yes. And lambing is when the lambs are born and um, yep. immediately leaping up and hopping around. Right. And we always, um, I do herding demonstrations with the border collies. And so we, we raise some ducks. And so we always have ducks and chicks for that Easter thing, as well as the lambs. So yeah, that seems like such a great thing for anybody, but for kids, especially to see, you know, how. Where they for family, that family stuff um, is, it happens here a lot. And that's, yeah. that's our favorite, I think. Yeah. Um, so I know that you have hopefully all of that coming up in the spring and you have some events coming up in the shorter term fiber festivals and that sort of thing. Do you want to tell us a little bit about those? Sure. Um, next weekend, which is, sorry, um, November 6th and 7th down at the big E in West Springfield, um, is going to be the new England fiber festival, which is a very, very big, um, fair with lots and lots of, of um, fiber producers, lots of demonstrations, all kinds of things happening for two days. Um, we always go, we're always in the animal section and we always bring a few Angora rabbits. So, um, so if somebody we, wants to meet Delilah that, in person. Right. <laughs> um, and then the weekend right after that, is um, the Crafts of Coleraine tour. Coleraine is blessed with a lot of talented artists. And so there are, in addition to fiber people, we have jewelers, we have painters, we have woodworkers, uh, other dyers, who, blacksmith, I forget the blacksmith. So it's, it's a great, um, it's a lot of fun and people can travel. They can go to one place or they can go to all of them. Um, and it's a chance for people to see where, where artists actually work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you going to be doing any demonstrations or is it just going to be a chance to come check out your, your fiber wares? It all depends on how busy it is. <laughs> not busy, which I don't like, um, <laughs> then I will, I'm sure, be spinning and we'll probably have, you know, we'll definitely have a couple of the rabbits around so people can see them. Um, sheep are not particularly interested in people, but people can admire them from a distance. <laughs> yeah, they probably appreciate that. <laughs> um, is there anything that we didn't touch on that you want to make sure people know about, about fiber, about your farm in particular? Or are there any more animals at your feet that we haven't met yet? <laughs> uh, we, we opted not to bring up the baby Angora goat. Jim thought it would just be too much. There <laughs> are, however, I've got to figure out how to do this, Claire. First, I have to put the rabbit down. <laughs> I have to walk over here, but the problem is when we tested this, uh, I don't know, I don't think this is going to work. Well, we got to see a little bit more of the lovely space you're in, so that's good. <laughs> well, there's a beautiful blooming witch hazel right in back of me, but um, now I've lost the, I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, I think, um, I think we're all set. I guess uh, I think we're we're about ready to wrap up. Um, that, that's great. If I could get the picture back, I would. But I can I, see you. I can see the top of your head and some sky and trees, which is perfectly lovely. There you are. <laughs> all right. I can't see you, but that's fine. Um, well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. And um, if people want to find 
out more about you, what's the best place for them to, to go on the internet or to, to connect with you? On the internet, um, but as people scroll down at the bottom of this, there's contact information about um, both of the fairs yes. and um, our website and some other general information. Yeah, so hopefully people will be inspired to learn a little bit more about local fiber and to, to, to meet you and maybe see some baby animals at some point. That, um. that would be great. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Jill. Oh, thank you.